Hello. Hey, um, this is Lorena from Synergy Behavior Solutions. Um, just doing a maybe unexpected live for some trainer tips um, today. I am a trainer with Synergy based in Portland, Oregon. And um, a few weeks ago, I did a live on uh, ditching the food bowl. So how to use your dog's daily food ration to reinforce behaviors that you like, um, to encourage some calmness and to like capture those moments that even the naughtiest dog, like 80% of the time is doing the right thing. Uh, whatever we have arbitrarily as humans decided is the right thing. Um, today, I kind of wanted to do an extension of that, uh, a little bit about where I am at in life. Um, we're all in weird spaces right now with um, global pandemic, etc. And one of the things that's happening in my life is that I recently just moved into a new space. So I moved into a new house with a new yard. Um, I have two dogs and uh, full disclosure, I am a professional dog trainer and my dogs do have some inter-dog aggression issues. So I have a, um, a pit bull who struggles with communicating with other dogs and especially with my other dog. Uh, most of the time they can get along fairly well, but she has kind of a hair trigger. And so she struggles a little bit with change and she struggles with stress. And so a lot of what I am doing in, the, in my space right now is a lot of low arousal building calmness and rehearsing the types of behaviors that I would like to see in this new space. And for my dog, especially this one that I'm talking about, hold on, this one here, um, what that is about is really all about um, how do I get her to be calm in the house? A calm dog is a good dog. My bird also says hello. Uh, he likes to be on the lives also. Uh, a calm dog is a good dog. Uh, people might say a tired dog is a good dog. I disagree. A calm dog is a good dog. When I'm tired, I'm pretty cranky. I think dogs are the same way. So how do we get... How do we get a dog who is generally pretty high arousal, uh, pretty reactive, um, struggles to settle, how do we get her to demonstrate calm? So um, a quick review, uh, my dogs don't eat out of a bowl. If you struggle with a dog that um, has high arousal behaviors in the house, and here are, exa here are a few examples of some high arousal behaviors, um, barking out of windows, pacing, bugging you for attention, trying to get you to constantly play with toys, um, getting into the trash, uh, intentionally maybe like crossing boundaries to get you to react, um, asking to go outside, asking to come inside, asking to go outside, asking to come inside. These are all these high arousal behaviors that can be really frustrating for us and actually are pretty frustrating and stressful for our dogs also. So how do we start to build a little bit of calmness? And so the way that I do that in my house is um, it's kind of a three pronged system. So one really important aspect is ditching the food bowl. So here are a few examples of what that looks like in my new house. So uh, we've got some treat containers here. There's just kibble and then some higher value treats. We have more in this room. Excuse me, dog. I'm gonna show you. Got more here. We got more here and even over here and here. So anywhere that I am in my house, I can very easily access medium, low and high value rewards for my dogs. Um, there is also another space here. Uh, the office where my other dog is hanging out right now, um, which is, uh, leads me to my next option, which is management. So we have ditching the food bowl. My dog is going to earn, especially this dog here. She is definitely going to be earning most of her food through this calmness protocol that I'm about to describe, at least in, uh, in part. And so, um, so the other thing is about management. We need to get our dogs to stop practicing the behaviors that are frustrating or challenging for us. And for my dog, that is things like uh, fence running in the backyard, becoming self-employed in the backyard. She's really good at finding her own things to do. Um, pacing around the house, having too many options. When you have the brain of a two-year-old child-ish, I don't like to make those kinds of comparisons often, but if we think about how we interact with toddlers and how we control their environment, the same is true for our dogs. So if your dog struggles with too many choices, which I would say is most dogs that people um, that are reactive or that maybe have some challenging behaviors, Choices are stressful, choices are exhausting, and we can't expect our dogs to make the right choice all of the time unless we make that choice easy for them. And so in my house, that looks like, uh, that looks like a gated community. That looks like very intentional spaces that are designed for calmness. So in here, that would look like um, a dog bed that is a very clear and distinct space. And in here, because Yoshi has so much value for this bed, she knows that when she gets on the bed, food is going to happen. 
I didn't cue her to get on the bed. I'm just waiting and I can capture these really nice calm behaviors. I actually um, also just have food on me all the time. A good option for that right now would be like um, like a hoodie. You can just put handfuls of kibble in there. Um, you can do uh, you can just have the food readily accessible if you want. But the act of having to walk over here and access the food also affects my dog's behavior. So I like to have food readily available. I have a collection of um, kibble and higher value treats, and I can capture those moments that Yoshi offers the behavior that I want. And then maybe I can add in a little bit of distance. I can move around. Maybe I will get silly and jump and dance. And if she remains where she is supposed to be, whoop, she gets fed on the bed. Um, while you are building value in the behaviors that you want to see, like chilling on a bed, I would really like for you to think about feeding slow and feeding the bed. So what that looks like here is rather than dropping food or tossing it to her, which is high arousal and exciting, especially for our dogs that like to catch, I am going to very <laughs> carefully and honorably and slowly transfer her fine dining experience to the bed. And that is how I'm going to capture the behaviors that I like to see. And there's a really nice head down behavior. And I'm going to go and do that again and slowly capture with a little bit of fine dining experience. Yoshi is not really that big on her kibble, but oh man, when it's presented like that, that is the most special thing that she could possibly eat. And here we go again, capturing a little bit of calm. So. I want to um, I want to say often when we start this process, we still have some really nice relaxed behavior there. Often when we start this process of capturing calm, there's two things that will happen. One is that you will approach your dog uh, with some food. You'll see them in the other room go and lay down. I'm just waiting for those moments that they go and offer some stillness. Maybe your dog is barking and then they stop barking and you can go and capture that moment depending on the dog. Calmness looks different depending on the dog. So for Yoshi right now, because we've worked on this for literally years, this is some really nice calm, but she did not start out that way. So this morning, the calmness that I was capturing while I was cooking breakfast was her on the other side of this gate, standing still and not barking at me. And then I would feed her through the gate. But now we're able to get a little bit more calm because that's where she's at and that is the calmness that I'm going to capture. So train the dog in front of you and figure out what that looks like for your dog. What does calmness look like right now for your dog? Uh, I'm gonna show you what this also looks like out in uh, the backyard because I think that's a really big space where a lot of dogs are um, experiencing a pretty profound influx of cortisol and stress hormones when they're left unsupervised in the backyard. So my other dog who tends to default to calm fairly well he spent an hour outside in the yard this morning working on his Kong and doing his thing. Uh, I would not let Yoshi out in the yard for an hour because there are so many things she can spend her time doing. And I'm going to show you. Yoshi, pick. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, one little side note that I want to say. Uh, the last component, because I'm probably going to be outside for the rest of this life, uh, the last component that you want to think about when it comes to calm is um, passive calming activities. So in my house, that meant 30 minutes of packing topples, hooves, and kongs with wet dog food. And, um, and my dogs will get, there's even more down here. And uh, my dogs will get um, at least one of those a day. And a bully stick probably also in the afternoon during some kind of like high arousal times. Um, and when we think about uh, the behaviors that our dogs are rehearsing in a particular environment, we wanna think about so imagine that job that you had that was really stressful. So maybe you had a job that you didn't like, and every time that you pulled up into the parking lot or walked through those doors, you had that kind of like emotional reaction to being in that space. So maybe your heart rate went up, maybe your, your fists tightened a little bit, maybe you could feel your back tighten, uh, maybe your shoulders would be like this all day, and you were kind of in that like, like borderline fight or flight mode. That's because in that space, you rehearsed a lot of stressful experiences and a lot of um, physiological responses to stress. The same is true with our dogs. So if you have a particular spot in your house or in your yard that your dog tends to go through the roof, barking, lunging, running, pacing, that's because they've continued to rehearse those behaviors in that space. And so for Yoshi, that is, means that what I really want in this yard beautiful yard that I'm excited to do lots of training in, is I want calmness unless I am actively engaging with her. So uh, today is a really great example of, um, of setting up the environment and using the environment as training opportunities because 
there is a dog next door, a German Shepherd dog, that discovered Yoshi this morning and they were fence running. So I recalled Yoshi and now she is not gonna go outside unless she is leashed for a little while. So, so I'm gonna put her leash on, I have some treats, and we're just gonna go and do a little bit of capturing calm. So uh, for me, transitions are really important. And so a transition like going from inside the house to outside the house uh, is a, should be a well-managed and intentionally structured situation. If Yoshi explodes out into the yard, then that is the level of energy she's gonna have the entire time. So what I like to do is set up a system where uh, when my dogs leave the house, they instantly turn back to me for a treat. And if that means leashing them initially, heard me to get a little bit of that engagement. So I want my dog to realize that I exist. She also has a bed for calmness out here and I can send her to her bed because we practice this behavior a lot in other environments and in less distracting environments. The last time she was out here about 30 minutes ago, she uh, was barking at that dog. And so now I really want her to not practice that. I want her to focus on me. And if we can hear or see the dog, I'm gonna pair those distractions this is a really important aspect of capturing calm that I want to uh, that I want to stress, and that is we're not just capturing like taking a photograph with a piece of food at the moment our dogs offer a calm behavior. We're also pairing distractions in the environment, like this dog next door, with food. And so what that might mean uh, for Yoshi right now is she is leashed so that she cannot practice running toward that fence. She loves the sun, she's gonna lay in the sun. Maybe I can sit with her for a little bit um, and we can, she has a nice passive calming activity. She has her long-term chew that she was working on. And I can sit with her and I can actually capture calmness in this moment too. And so she offered this really nice down. I'm gonna go ahead and feed it. I'm actually really impressed with her right now because the last time she was out here, she had all because of that dog next door. And so can I get to a place where that dog um, appears, barks, moves, she notices it, I'm gonna mark and reward. So her marker word right now is nice, especially for calm behaviors. So um, if I see uh, hear a car door slam, if I hear some people laugh, if I see a bird fly overhead, I'm just gonna pair that distraction with food. Car just drove by the house, nice. And then I'm going to feed the ground. Nice. Any disengagement from the environment, capture that and feed your dog for it. And by disengagement, I mean Yoshi turned away from me and then back toward me. It's as simple as that. For a dog that is that reinforced by the environment, this is a dog that will choose the environment over me if she has a choice. How can I reinforce and set up the environment with a tether, with a nice spot for her to relax, with clear and intentional boundaries and structure? How do I get that calmness from my dog so that I can reinforce it? If your dog spends all their day fence running back and forth because of that dog next door. If they spend all day out in the yard chasing squirrels, they might be tired at the end of the day, but you actually have a dog with an elevated level of cortisol um, and, uh, and likely to be more reactive during the day. Um, so I'm going to, uh, to wrap up by just the three pillars right now of capturing calm. This is a very brief introduction, is to ditch the food bowl use your dog's kibble and maybe mix in with higher value treats depending on your dog. My other dog will work for his kibble all day, um, but Yoshi might need a little bit every now and then of like some dehydrated beef liver or um, maybe a little piece of hot dog or cheese. And uh, use, using medium value treats, I'm just gonna capture, like take a photograph at the moment my dog offers a calm behavior. Um, and I really like to set up the environment to make it easy for them to do that. So in, her in my living room, that might be like, um, all of the blinds are drawn. Nice. So she just noticed something, her head came up. I don't know what it was. I'm gonna feed her for it anyway because she remained nice and settled just like that. Um, and so it might be all the blinds are drawn. Maybe there's some nice music playing. She chooses to settle. I'm gonna go walk over and feed her. If she gets up and follows me, I'm gonna ignore her until she goes and settles again. And then I will go back and feed again. Um, if your dog approaches you while you're approaching them, you can go back to the spot they were being calm and put the food there and then ignore again. And once they go and settle, feed. Uh, remember to train the dog in front of you. Nice. Good girl. That dog is back out, so a really great opportunity to work with her. Um, and so uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. train the dog in front of you. So depending on how calm she can be. So a second ago, she was lying on her side. Now she's kind of hyper-focused on what's happening over there, but I'm gonna go ahead and feed her for remaining where she is anyway. If she were to hop up, and try to run, I have her tethered. 
and she can't get very far. So she's not going to be able to practice or rehearse the behavior of running at the fence, which I do not want her to get better at. I want her to get better at this. I do not want her to get better at chasing squirrels and other dogs. She's already really good at that. Um, and then the last piece is management. So when you're setting up your space and you're offering these passive calming activities, make sure that your dog has a nice, relaxed, quiet place to do that. So my dogs are separated by a door and a gate while they were working on their long-term chews. So like Summer had a Kong and Yoshi had her hoof and she was hanging out out here in the sun. Uh, maybe she wouldn't have been able to do that earlier, but now she can and that's fine. Um, cool, so we, uh, we at Synergy are offering a lot of online webinars. If you're interested in learning more about capturing calmness and how to foster calmness as a skill in your dog, any breed, hi Sylvia, um, any breed, any energy level, any uh, behavior struggle, any dog can do this. This is not, um, this is a high drive American Staffordshire Terrier. She is not um, a dog that people would consider as easy and she is not a dog that people would consider as generally being calm. Um, and yet we can still achieve this uh, with a structured and intentional approach. Um, and that means being clever and setting up the environment and being aware of the moments that she does offer those calm behaviors. So if you're interested in, um, if you're interested in learning more, we do offer a Capturing Calmness webinar. Uh, we offered it like last week and we would be happy to offer it again. So go ahead and comment on this video if you're interested in signing up for that webinar. Um, and we would love to offer it again. I think now is the time for it because folks are working from home and life is a little bit stressful uh, to be home with our dogs. It's stressful for our dogs too. Uh, you to be home all day, even if your dog loves it, they're not getting enough rest and rest is essential for that calmness. Um, so. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you hopefully in a couple weeks. Um, have a lovely day, and um, hopefully you get a little bit of sun too. It's gorgeous out here today. Say bye, Yoshi. Bye-bye.